For chapter six, now we're jumping back to B cells and we're going to spend some time talking again about B cell receptors, but kind of how B cells go through development and where those, when those B cell receptors are actually created and when they're moved to the surface and when they're utilized. So it's all about the B cells developing and B cells going to school. So getting educated. Um, let's go ahead then and just take a few minutes to talk about the big picture ideas from this chapter. First of all, we've mentioned that people have the capacity or the potential uh, to make really a limitless number of antibodies. I mean, there is a limit, but the number is so high that it really is limitless. And that means that they could potentially make an antibody with a specificity for any possible microorganism or foreign invader that they could possibly encounter at any point in their lives. So that's pretty great. But <clears throat> the body doesn't keep all this stuff stored up. Um, nor does it keep the number of B cells uh, because we would just be so many B cells, like our bone marrow would be busting at the seams or our blood would be busting at the seams because it's just too many cells. So rather than to keep this stockpile of all of these different B cells, the body carries a much smaller inventory of B cells, but an inventory that can expand and grow upon needed. And so we're gonna talk a lot about clonal expansion of the B cells to make enough antibody to fight off infection, um, depending on whatever pathogen or foreign vapor we come into contact with. And so this is going to involve B cell development or the creation of B cells and the education of B cells. And so there's gonna be six phases that we're going to cover in chapter six. The first three phases are going to be um, prior to being exposed to pathogen and, um, and, and making their B cell receptors, exporting their B cell receptors, learning and testing uh, their B cell receptors against different types of proteins. And so those are all going to occur um, uh, in the bone marrow where the last three phases, four, five, and six, are going to be once a B cell is ready to go out and fight the good fight. And so those are going to happen out in peripheral circulation and then in the lymph nodes eventually, um, and then back to the bone marrow. So we're going to break this lecture up then into three lectures after this one. The first one will cover phase one by itself because it's so big and lots of stuff happens in it. Then we're going to look at phases two and three together in the next lecture. And then in the final lecture, we'll look at phases four, five, and six briefly because really phases four, five, and six are what we're going to be covering when we look at how the immune system functions in later chapters. So let's set the stage for all of this and where this all occurs. And we're really looking at the bone marrow. And so it's pretty nice that the B cells develop in the bone marrow. Um, and once they've been um, created and they've been tested and educated, then they go out to secondary lymphoid tissue and peripheral circulation. So that's kind of where we're going to be looking at um, where we're at in the, in the part of the body throughout this chapter. So let's stop there and we'll pick up the um, next lecture then when we start with phase one of B-cell development.